Welcome to another Tip of the Week video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. In this tip video, I'm going to show you how to create report grouping levels in Access 2010. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to take this service log where we've got different service texts, different service types on various dates, and I'm going to show you how to add all this information up and use grouping levels in a report to clean up the information and show each service tech followed by the type of service they provided and how many times they provided that service between whatever two dates you specify. We'll use report sorting and grouping levels to accomplish this goal. The first thing I'm going to create are my supporting tables. I'm going to need a technician table to store my service techs, which is a tech ID, my auto number, and a tech name. And you can put other things in here like phone number and email address and mailing address. But for now, for this example, we'll just keep it simple. And I switch over to data sheet view and put a couple of records in. Joe, Sue, Bob, Mike, Tom, and Mary. Now I've got my service techs. I also want to track different types of service, whether it's PC repair or software consulting or training. So I have a service type T table that will include a service type ID, auto number, and a service type text, which is a description of the type of service. And there are some sample service types. Now my main table that's going to bring everything together is my service log table. I've got a service log ID, which is the auto number for this table, a tech ID, so I know which service technician performed the call, the service type ID, what kind of service was it, that links back to my service type table. Now I'm just going to track the number of service calls per type per day. So I've got the service date, which is the actual date that I'm tracking, and how many service calls of this type did the service technician go on this day? Now I've opened up all three tables so I can see them. Now ideally we'll build a form to do all this data entry, but for now, for this simple example, I'll just do it right in the tables. Let's say Tech ID 1 Joe performed some PC repair on 4-1, and he had two service calls. All right, see how this works? Tech ID, let's say Bob, performed training 3 on 4-1, and he had five appointments. All right, and so on. So I'll put a couple of different dates in for a couple of different techs. Joe had some software consulting on 4-2 and he had two appointments. All right, so I'll put in some sample records. Okay, there's a couple of different records, a couple of different texts, a few different dates. Now I want to show a report that's broken down by service type and tech ID. So I can say between these two dates, I want to see for each technician the different types of service he performed and the total counts. So let's first create a query to bring together all the information that I need. I'll go to Query Design. I'm going to add in my service log table and the other tables for supporting information. I rearrange these a little bit so you can see the relationships here. Tech ID is related to Tech ID up here and Service Type ID is related to Service Type ID here in the service table. Now I'm going to bring in the star from Service Log T and then the supporting information from these other tables, so tech name and then service type. I don't need these ID fields up here because that's just duplicate information. I'm going to save this as service log 1 Q for query. Save that. Now when I run it, you can see there's all my information from my service log, plus over to the right here, I've got the supporting information, tech name and service type. Now, if you want to add a date criteria to this, you can. Go back to Design View. We'll have to add service date separately. And I'll click off the Show button so it doesn't show up twice. And down here, Criteria, just say Between, and then inside of square brackets, Start, Date, and End Date. Just like that. That will prompt the user for two dates and use those as the beginning and end date for our query. So if I run this now, it'll say start date, I'll say 4-1, end date, let's say 4-2. And now I'm just seeing the 4-1 and 4-2 records. Let's save that. Ideally, if it's a query or a report that you're going to be running often, you could use a form 
So you could type in those criteria instead of having a little prompt window pop up. There's tips to do that on my website. Now I'm going to create a report so I can group these by service tech, then by service type. So let's go over here. I like to use report design. I like building things from scratch. I don't like the wizards. The first thing you have to do is tell the report where it's getting its data from. So open up the report properties, double click right here where the ruler bars meet. That opens up this property window. The record source will be our service log one query. All right, now it knows where its records are coming from. Now we can go up and click on add existing fields to see a list of fields that are in that query. Now what do I want to see on my report? Well, I want to see the tech name. I want to see the service type. I want to see the number of service calls. And the date is irrelevant because we're going to group by the month. But let's just put that there for now, the service date. All right, and I'll close that window. And I'll save this as my service log R for report. And let's view it and see what we get. I'll click on the view button right here. We are asked for a start date, 4-1, and an end date, let's say 5-1. And there we go. We got tech name, tech name, and so on. It's showing each record once. But I want to group these and see all of Joe's together, and then all of Bob's together, and so on. Instead of Joe, Bob, Joe, Joe, etc. So, let's go back to design view. I'm going to add a grouping and sorting level. Click on this button right here. It's on Report Design Tools and then the Design tab. That'll turn on this bar way at the bottom down here. It says Group, Sort, and Total. Way at the bottom. Let's add a group. We're going to group it on. Now we can group it on the tech name or the tech ID, whichever one you prefer. I'm going to group it on the tech ID just in case you have two Joes or two Bills. The tech ID is always unique. Do you want to sort this? Sure, from smallest to largest is fine. Now I also want to see a group header and footer. So click on a little more over here. And right over here it says with a header section. Okay, make sure that's on. You can also turn on the footer section if you want to. That's up to you. Let's turn it on with a footer section. So now if you look up top, you've got a tech ID header and a tech ID footer. So I could take the tech name and slide it up here. All right, and then get rid of some of the extra empty space in the middle. All right, save your report, and now run it and take a look at what you get. Start date, 4-1. And see, this is why you might want to use a form, because you don't have to keep typing in these dates. The form stays open in the background. Okay, look, we've got Joe, PC repair, PC repair, software, PC repair, then down here, you got tech name Bob. So they're all grouped together. Well, wouldn't it be also nice if we can group together the service type? Well, that's just another grouping level. All right, come back in here. Come down to the bottom. Add a group. This time, we're going to group on the service type ID from smallest to largest. And I'm not going to bother with a footer for this one. We're just, just going to use the header. So come right back up top here, take service type, slide it up into the service type header. And then we'll take this stuff and put it over here, just like that. All right, in fact, we can probably get rid of these labels here. Let's get rid of the labels. Get rid of that. Get rid of the service type, the tech name labels, right? And here's the name of the tech. Here's the service type. Here's the service date and the number of service calls. All right, save that and run the report. Start date, end date, and look at that. There's Joe, PC repair, and there's his dates. We might want to sort this too. All right, software consulting is next. Then we've got Bob and all of his details. See how they're grouped together, and then this one's grouped under this one. Now here's the key. If you only want to see totals, for the period of dates that you put in there, you don't want to necessarily see all of their individual dates. You just want to see a total for that period. You can hide the detail section. Watch this. We'll go back to design view. Let's put up here a total for the number of service calls. 
All right, watch this. I'm going to copy this, copy, and then hit paste. I've copied and pasted the number of service calls up into the service type ID header. Okay, that's fine. You can put it in the header too. Now, double click on this guy to bring up its properties. All right, it's called text for, that's fine. Change the control source equals the sum of the num service calls. That'll add all of those up in that detail section. All right, and yeah, you can give it a good name up here if you want, like uh, total service calls. That's up to you. If you want to name the control, I prefer naming my controls. Now when I run it, look what I get. 4151. We get a total of all the records below. All right, this 13 is the total of all the records in this section. So 6 plus 5 is 11, plus 2 is 13. All right, this is the next total here, the 2 for this guy. Okay, you can put functions like that in the header or the footer of any group. And now here's the beauty. Here's why I did that. Go back to design view. Open up the properties for the detail section. Change the visible property to no. Now everything that's in this detail section will be hidden. Save your report. Open it up again. Start date, end date, and there we go. Now I've got just the tech and the sum of all of his PC repairs, all of his software consultings, then the next tech, and so on. And yes, you can put totals in here for each tech if you want to. All right, go back to design view. I'll just copy this because I've already got it here. Copy. Let's put it in the um, let's put it in the tech header. You can put it in the tech header or the footer, whichever you want to do. All right, maybe bold it. Save it. And four one five one. There we go. Joe's total for the period. Each group. All right. See how these sorting and grouping levels work. And of course, now you can format it and get rid of these border lines and arrange things the way you want them. If you want to see the tech name next to each one of these and turn off that header, that's also an option. You can do that too. All right. Take the tech name and copy and paste it down into here like that. And then just hide this tech ID header. You don't have to see that. Visible, no. I'll leave the work that I've done in case I change my mind in the future, though. All right, now when I run my report, 4151, it looks like that. See? And you can reformat this and make it look better. But there we go. There's our sorting and grouping levels. And you can stack multiple grouping and sorting levels on top of each other if you want to to get the desired effect. Thank you for watching this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. And for more tip videos just like this one, visit my website at accesslearningzone.com.